everybody! Today I wanted to go over working with the push modifier and the push modifier weight map in Daz Studio. Um, so we are just going to go ahead and get on into this. So as you can see, I've already created a little scene here. We've got a little fighting action going on. My intent here is to basically show... Let's switch cameras real quick here. This foot making contact with her stomach in a way that kind of shows like a rippling effect or, or like an indent from the foot going into the stomach. Just to add like a little dimension to how this looks. So the first thing I'm going to do is for the recording, I am going to switch out of iray and texture shaded even i am gonna go for smooth shaded while i'm working on this just to help with usage on the computer because i've got a couple different things going on right now um but so the very first thing we're gonna do is funny enough i'm gonna zoom in on her head because when I add this stuff, it's going to do some crazy things and she is going to pop right out of her clothes, which since this tutorial is going on Daz, I can't really just have stuff flying all over the place or poking people's eyes out. So the very first thing that you're going to do is click on the figure that you want to apply the push modifier to. So in this case, it is this Genesis 8, which is this one right here. If I turn on the thing. Um, and we are going to go to Edit, Figure, down to Geometry. And then right here, you're going to see Add Push Modifier. And we are going to add the modifier. And we are going to call it kick ripple and we're going to hit OK. Now the first thing you're going to notice, eek, she looks a little bit different all of a sudden. And obviously now you can see why I probably, you know, moved away from down lower. Because <laughs> at the moment she's very swollen. Basically what it's doing is pushing all of the geometry outward. That's why it's called a push modifier. It can also push inward if you put it at a negative. Um, I think we can all agree, though, that this is not something that we would want to apply to everything here. It would not be good. So what we want to do is we want to target a specific area or areas. So the next thing we're going to do while we're still selected on Genesis 8 female is go to create and come down here to where it says new push modifier weight node. And we're going to click on that. You can leave the name, you can leave the label, make sure that parent to selected item, Genesis 8 female is, is selected. If you don't see that, it's because this button is pushed. So you wanna make sure that that is clicked and then hit accept. And you're gonna see that now you're gonna have this down here. Now, what the modifier is going to do is make it so that you can apply or take away this puffing or sucking in effect um, on specific areas rather than all areas like we have it now. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to get to our tool settings palette. Um, you can click this button up here which will pop it up if that doesn't work you can go to window panes and go to tool settings and pop it up um from here you want to go down to where it says node weight map brush click on that and um the next thing we want to do while we are clicked on this is we want to click add map where it says unused maps. Now, a couple things that I want to point out. One, when we added the first part where we did edit and all that, 
push modifier, what we were doing was on Genesis 8, we were adding a kick ripple dial, which if you select Genesis 8 would come under mesh offset. Um, now what we are doing is actually adding a weight map to that dial to tell it what areas we're targeting. So we're going to go back to tool settings here. I just wanted to point out. Um, now from here, the first thing that we notice is she's showing all red, which means she is all pushed out right now or every polygon on her this is being applied to. So if I made this negative one, it would suck all of her in. She's seen probably better days. She's kind of inside out. <laughs> We're going to push her back outward for now. And what I am actually going to do is go to my dial, funny enough. And I'm going to going to I'm going to change it to negative and probably about two. Now she's going to suck all in. But that's actually the effect I want. I want it, the kick to ripple off of her and kind of push in on her stomach. So I kind of want to see the results as I'm working on them. So I'm going to suck her all in, which makes her look real crazy. I'm going to go back to this. Everything is still red. I'm going to go back to the tool setting. We're still on the weight map. We're on the kick ripple right here. Now, the first thing I want to do is in the viewport here, just anywhere, doesn't matter, you could be over here. I'm going to do right click and go to geometry selection, select all. And you're going to see right now she's glowing red. She's got a bodysuit on here, so that's why that's not glowing red. Um, and then we're going to right click again without clicking off of anything. And we're going to go down to weight editing, fill selected. And where it asks what you want to do, you want it to be 0%. Basically, when we hit accept to this, what it's telling it is that this effect that I'm applying at negative 2, I don't want to be affecting anything at all right now. So no polygons are going to be affected. Please put her back to looking human. Accept. And yay, we did it right. So... Now we should have where it still says negative two, but it doesn't look like it's doing anything at all. Next thing, and this is an important one, we're going to right click again and we are going to go down to geometry selection and we are going to do clear selection. So now we are kind of back to um, where nothing is selected and she is looking human. Now what we want to do is actually take a look at the area in question that we want to be working on. So the first thing I'm going to do is up here on the weight on the node weight map brush, you're going to see a P and an S. One stands for paint, one stands for smooth. What we want to do is we want to paint. So we're going to hit P. And then we kind of want to paint around this shoe. Just so I have a general idea of the area I want to affect here. We're going to paint around the shoe. Make it a nice kind of decent line going. Um, in order to paint, you're just left clicking and dragging. I would assume that you can do this with like a Wacom, Cintiq, stuff like that. I don't know because I've never actually used it to do this. I've always used my mouse. I don't know why. So if you have any of those like an Intuos or Graphite or Bamboo or any of that kind of stuff, this might be a little easier doing it that way. But OK, so now that we've got a little bit of an outline going, what I'm going to do to save even more computing power is I'm going to turn her off and all of her clothes. I'm just going to turn everything off here. So that 
A, we can see better, and B, it gives us a little more processing. Now we want to make sure we're still in the push modifier and we're still selected, we're still on the tool settings, we're still in node. And now what we're going to do is kind of fill in the rest of this area because I wanted it all to be sucked in, not just that one part. Now, um, you're still just left clicking and dragging around in here. If When you're doing this, you get to a point where you accidentally went somewhere you didn't mean to be. Like, say you clicked all the way over here and you painted and see how it's turning red. That's how you know you can see the indent showing. Okay, say you painted over there and that was not what you wanted. If you press and hold Alt, while left clicking, what it's going to do is bring that back in the other direction. So that's a good way to fix if you do something like that by accident, hit a place you didn't want to hit. Um, so we're going to keep going here. We're going to, right now, she's kind of missing a belly button because I've really just done a job on this. On the other hand, the foot was covering the belly button, so I wasn't real worried about it. Okay, so if we turn her to the side, you're going to see definitely is sucking her stomach in. She's definitely getting pulled in here. Now, I think what I want to do is add like almost like a secondary ripple line over this way some. So I'm just going to go kind of back and forth over this area. I'm going to like leave a blank area and then add a second area where it's kind of pushed in. So this kind of looks like a ripple that's going through from the shoe. Kind of like a freeze frame of the body reacting to the shoe, if I'm making sense. Um... And so we're just going to keep filling this in. And okay, so we are to here. I'm going to press and hold Alt. And I'm going to kind of come back over this a little bit more to kind of get this a little bit nicer. The way I kind of was picturing it. Okay, and now I'm going to let Alt go again, and we're going to take a look, and I've got kind of like a ripple line going. I've got where the shoe is going to be. I've got this secondary place. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to switch to smooth. Now I want to point out a couple things. First, there's a sensitivity dial here, so you can lighten or make heavier what you're doing. Um, in addition to that, you can also change the inner and outer radius on the brush. So if I hover, well, I'll hover here, um, the outer radius is the red, the inner radius is the green. So if you want to make the area of either bigger, you would change these two numbers. Um, the higher the inner radius, the kind of sharper or harsher the brush is, the lower the inner radius, the softer it is while you're going across things. Um, and outer radius controls, if the outer radius is way bigger than the inner, again, it's going to be softer. If you pull it in tighter, it's going to be harsher. And if you make both bigger and bigger, you're going to get bigger areas. Um, if you turn the sensitivity up, it's going to be harsher. If you turn it down, it's going to be softer kind of all do similar things but so right now what we're going to do is we are going to click the s which is basically going to smooth out some of these areas so we don't want like harsh lumpy bumpy mess we want kind of a soft even 
So what this is going to do is look at the polygons and kind of take an average and just smooth, which is technically what the S is for, smooth, um, and just smooth this stuff out nicer. Which I definitely recommend unless you want, for some reason, a very harsh or very strong effect. And so we're going to smooth out this over here. Kind of soften all of this up quite a bit. I'm going to turn it some, and I think I want to add some back. And so let's see here. On the smooth, if I press and hold control, it's going to kind of take some of the smoothing back out again for me. Just to get my ridge back here. And now if I let go and just kind of go over it in one kind of nicer stroke and maybe hit the edges as opposed to going over that middle again. One tiny tap there. Okay. So now what we have is basically this. Which, if I go out of this tool, which the easiest way is just to click here. Okay, one second. Just to make sure I didn't mess up which button I was hitting, it is control if you want to add in more affected area again, like so. And then just click and go over to smooth it back out. I just wanted to make sure that I said control and not alt. The other stuff on this brush was alt, and alt does do stuff too. Control and alt on all these brushes kind of do the inverse of each other. So like right there, a second ago, I was just hitting control. Now I'm hitting alt. Now I'm hitting control. And I believe that it's basically kind of calling up the paintbrush almost on a certain level and kind of repainting in some of those areas. But hopefully that gives somewhat of an idea of how this goes. And I actually played too much, so I'm going to back it back up to where I was before all that. Okay. I tapped this a little... Soften this up right here. Okay. So now that we are all done that, we can click on just whatever, like so. And we're going to see that we have our weight map applied. If we go to parameters and we click on Genesis 8 instead of the weight map, we can go to Mesh Offset, and we can look at our Ripple Kick, and obviously we can dial that way in. I wouldn't advise going that harsh. We could push it out. Now she's going to look all kinds of crazy. And um, we are going to say that maybe, hmm, maybe about 2.5. I'll try that. We will turn on our other Genesis here. You can see there's the foot going. I'm going to switch our camera now. Kind of look at it from a different angle. And now you can kind of see how, okay, before, and then after. We'll switch into iRay preview so you guys can actually see what um, what it looks like with the renderer. I know it takes a minute to load. Do 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 do. <laughs> Sorry, I like to actually show the render just 
or at least kind of what the render looks like because sometimes the stuff looks a lot different in the rendered than it did before kind of deal um we can also go to the camera let's see this is camera two and we can go ahead and turn the headlamp off because that'll make a difference on shadows and such okay since i don't really have any lights in this scene i guess we kind of need it on <laughs> for right now but anyways you can get a sense of how this is looking so you can kind of see that the foot is now pushing into the stomach. There is kind of this ripple line here and then one a little bit behind it. It's not super strong. We could probably dial it up even a little more than what we have it now. So we could come in here and, oops, go to Genesis 8. Don't need to hit the push modifier now. I could go in here and I could dial it up to, I don't know. Let's see what it looks like at four. That's probably too much. Yeah, four is a little much. Don't like four. We'll see. Maybe three is the, the good spot. And if we didn't like something, like I'm not crazy about how this is up here. Obviously, I could go back and kind of soften up more up in this area to calm that down some more. But I think it gives you the general idea of how the push modifier and the push modifier weight map work together. Um, and we'll switch view here real quick just to get a better look with everything kind of closer up and in view. Good lighting and stuff would bring this out better. Now you can see that she's definitely pushed in, and if I put her foot right on that pushed in part, it would probably even be better. Um, I could have accentuated the ditch over on this side a little more or made the brush smaller to make it more pronounced and more specific, like made this brush smaller probably too would have been good, but this was a basic. Now, if you think about it, you could do this same thing with like Genesis's face, like, or... You know, if you were having a barroom brawl thing where one figure hit the other figure in the mouth, like you could kind of push in or pull out parts of the face to show the contact with the fist to the face. Um, the push modifier can also be used, I do believe, with geometry shells to push in and pull out parts of the shells. Um, hopefully... This at least gives you a little bit of a better understanding of how it all kind of works together and how it looks. And um, if you have any questions or if I accidentally missed something when I was making this video, please feel free to ask me in the thread. I'll be happy to try to answer or try to find Richard. <laughs> <laughs> to answer if I don't know the answer because he is my personal guru um that's who I always go to when I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> um but if you have any questions whatsoever please let me know and I hope that you found the tutorial informative and useful and I hope that you will enjoy playing around with the push modifier and the weight map and i can't wait to see what you guys all do with it um thank you very much for watching and i hope you have a really good evening bye